Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Northwest Conference Track and Field Championship Meet. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Nate Garlock. You are watching the NWC Track Championship sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. We kick things off with the women's 100-meter hurdles. We've got heat two of two in the blocks right now, and here's who we will have running. In lane one, Lindsay Hatcher of Lincoln View. Lane two, Morgan Apple of Lipstick. Lane three, Aubrey Burkholder of Bluffton. Lane four, Liv Lindemann of Delphus Jefferson coming in with your fastest seed time of 15 seconds. Lane five, Ryland Jones of Allen East. Lane six, Grace Gokey of Spencerville. Lane seven, Addison Dowler of Crestview. And lane eight, Sadie Tarpley of Bluffton. Liv Lindemann, kind of the all everything for the Wildcats. <laughs> we've, we've been calling her That's name right. for several years now and every season <laughs> that we've been able to broadcast things and having another phenomenal year here on the track. She has eyes on a run to Columbus and would love to get that started here with a conference championship. Come on, Grace! Come on, Live out to a good start. Good three-step over the hurdle. No hesitation. Very clean. Not a lot of separation from the top of the hurdle in that lead leg, and she's going to come away with a big victory. Look at that. Liv Lindemann, Adelphus Jefferson. She is your winner in the women's 100-meter hurdles. Heat two of two in the boys' 110 hurdles. Lane one, Noah Peters of Lincoln View. Lane two, Caleb Hopkins of Allen East. Lane three, Noah Flores of Lipsick. Lane four, Jackson Brown of Ada. Lane five, Leighton Blankmeyer of Columbus Grove. Lane six, Jace Brecht of Lipsick. Lane seven, Cody Ricker of Lincoln View. And lane eight, Carson Cruz of Bluffton. I had the opportunity of seeing Jackson Brown earlier this year at the Columbus Grove invite. He ran a great race that day. Nice to see what kind of improvements he has made throughout the season. They are off to a clean start as Jackson looks to be out in front over the first couple of hurdles. Jackson in the lead up front, pulling away from the rest of the competitors. He's gonna lean at the line. A great race though for second and third. We'll have to wait for the official results, but it looks like Carson Cruz from Bluffton may have come away with that at the lean. Good race. Good race for the boys' 110-meter hurdles. We'll be back right after this. You're watching the NWC Track Championship sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Heat three of three in the girls' 100 meters. Lane one, it's Lexi Reynolds of Lipsick. Lane two, Bryn Fortman, Columbus Grove. Lane three, Nakaya Kemet of Delphus Jefferson. Lane four, Liv Lindemann, who we just saw win the 100 hurdles. She's in lane four from Jefferson. Lane five, Addison Dowler of Crestview. Lane six, Claire Hoback of Spencerville. Lane seven, Allison Thompson of Columbus Grove. And lane eight, Maya McDougal of Bluffton. Yeah, Liv Lindemann ran that 100 hurdle time when she won 15.24, so she's got to turn around and, and be ready to go here. She has the top time coming in to this race. And we'll see if maybe that hurdle warmed her up a little bit and see if she can stay towards the front. Clean start by all the competitors. Liv up front, but she's being pushed. She is. Crestview's Addison Dowler. Addison pulled away a great race by Addison Dowler. She's going to take home the conference champion in a little bit of an upset. Heat three of three. This is the 100-meter dash. In lane one, Braxton McMichael of Spencerville. Lane two, Jackson Friesner of Allen East. Lane three, Boston Reynolds of Delphus Jefferson. Lane four, Hayden Heigl of Lipsick. Lane five, Cole Hurston of Delphus Jefferson. Lane six, Logan Jolliffe of Ada. Lane seven, Jacob Hirschberger of Allen East. And lane eight, Keegan Bame of Columbus Grove. This is going to be an incredibly fast heat. There are some very impressive times. Hayden Heigl of Lipsick, 11.03. Cole Hurston of Delphus Jefferson, 11.10. Jo Logan Jolliffe of Ada, 11.30. This should be a very fun race to watch. Got to get the start right. You got to get out of the blocks correct. You got to have the head positioning in the right spot. All of that matters for this race. Clean 
start. A very good start by Hayden Heigl in the middle. He shot right out, and he's going up towards the front. He's going to come away with a nice victory. Jacob Hershberger from Allen East coming in second. It looked like he ran a great race, had a great start. Everything you mentioned, um, Jennifer, just had a good start. He stayed low. He rose up the way that he should have halfway through the track, and a nice push through the line. Good job to these guys. That is the end of the men's 100 meters, and we'll be back with a 4x2 next. You're watching the NWC Track Championships, sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. The girls, 4x200 meter relay is ready to go. Lane 2, it's Ada. Lane 3, Lincoln View. Lane 4, Bluffton. Lane 5, Spencerville. Lane 6, Columbus Grove. And Lane 7, Allen East. Top seed time coming into this race is a minute 53.77, belonging to the team of Bluffton. They'll be in lane four. Right behind them by just a few tenths of a second is Spencerville in lane five. When you talk about these relays, it all comes down to the handoffs a lot of times when you're talking about first, second, and third place. And especially with as close as Bluffton and Spencerville is, these handoffs are going to be key as they come into the first exchange. That's right. And that's how you can tell where they are as uh, in the race since everything is staggered. Um, as Nate's walk, watching that, I'm going to let you know here in the girls, after event five in the 100 meters, Grove still is in the lead. Columbus Grove was 69, but Bluffton is right behind four points with 65 points. They had a nice exchange up top in Columbus Grove and Spencerville just about the same time. But as we come around this curve and check out the middle of the track, Lofty doing a great job to erase that stagger. That's Schweingruber running right now. McDougal, Schweingruber, Scholes, and Giesge is your Bluffton team. Your Grove team is Myers, Hoff, Hawker, and Raider. First handoff is going to belong to Bluffton. Spencerville not too far behind them. Columbus Grove right there in the mix as well, but right now separating themselves is Bluffton and Spencerville. Give you a quick rundown of who we have. Ada's team, Hevlin, Now, Hazleton, Allen, Lincoln View, Dunlap, Grindel, Hatcher, Hatcher, Bluffton, as I already mentioned, Spencerville, McMichael, Ricker, Gokey, Hoback, Grove, I already mentioned, and Allen East, Miller, Jordan, Payne, and McGew. So it looks like Spencerville separating just a little bit. They get that handoff first. A little bit of a struggle there for Spencerville, or for, excuse me, Columbus Grove in the middle of the track. They're going to have a little bit of ground to make up. They're going to come around this final turn. The stagger will be gone. We'll, we'll see where we stand. Coming down to the last 100. It looks like Spencerville's out front, but Grove trying to track him down. Spencerville trying to hold him off. And it looks like they will to take home the championship. Spencerville first, Bluffton second, Columbus Grove third. Men's four by 200 meter relay. This is heat two of two. In lane two, it's Bluffton. Lane three, Columbus Grove. Lane four, Allen East. Lane five, Delphus Jefferson. Lane six, Crestview. And lane seven, Lincoln View. Allen East looks to be your favorite. So they have a time coming in of 131.67. Almost two and a half seconds ahead of second place. But on a nice cool day like this, nice day to run, no wind. We've seen some time drops. Spencerville dropped a lot of time in that girls 4x2. So we'll see if anybody else here in the boys 4x2 can copy that. And they are off, and as they are running, we'll give you results through the boys' 100 meters. Still in first place is Columbus Grove with 73 points, Lipsick second with 50, Bluffton third with 46, and Allen East fourth with 32. Allen East already making up the stagger on the middle of the track there. As they look to have the first handoff, a little bit of a stutter there, but got it away clean. Hersberger, Friesner, Schaefer, Hensley. That makes up the Allen East relay. Who is currently blazing around, getting ready to hand off to the third runner. Crestview trying to stave him off, but Allen East coming in quick. 
Another clean handoff as they look to have a big lead right now heading into the third leg. Watch Crestview, though, because at that handoff, it was pretty close. But as I say that, that third runner for Allen East is making up that stagger and is using that back stretch to his benefit. As he overtakes the runner from Crestview, Allen East is going to come into this final exchange looking to solidify themselves in first, and they do. Bluffton's anchor is Cruzy. Columbus Grove's anchor is Blankemeyer. Allen East with Hensley. Delphus Jefferson with Weiss. Crestview's anchor is Harding. And Lincoln View's anchor is Evans, according to our sheet. Allen East with the big lead here. They're going to stroll in, have a good fight back there for third between Columbus Grove and Bluffton. And it looks like Columbus Grove is going to end up taking the third spot. Jumping now from the sprints to the distance. It's the women's 1600 meters. Number one, June Essinger. Number two, Grace Conley, both from Bluffton. Number three, Brinley Moody of Lincoln View. Number four, Macy Colwicki of Crestview. Five, Lily Montgomery of Columbus Grove. Six, Sarah Camphouse of Columbus Grove. Seven, Lavina Grillo of Spencerville. Eight, Anna Gardner of Crestview. Nine, Elissa Renner of Lincoln View. 10, Isabel Carmen of Allen East. And 11 is Miriam Mathis Schwartz of Allen East and 12, Ella Pullman of Spencerville. Top seed time coming into this race belongs to Brindley Moody of Lincoln View, a 517.10 seed time. As she has a couple of girls behind her that's going to try to track her down. Macy Kowicki of Crestview and Lily Montgomery of Columbus Grove, not too far behind. We think about this as being a long distance race, but it's actually only four laps around the track and does move along, I think, a little more quickly than we oftentimes imagine it to happen. Well, four laps around the track might not be a long time for you, Jennifer, but for, <laughs> <laughs> for a lot of us, that, that, is, that is what we call distance. Well, but it's not that you can't really, like, go get a meal right uh, it, now. You know, it's you don't true. have that it, much time. True. Well, that and anymore with the talent that a lot of these girls and the trainings and, and the way that they've really stepped up, you have you, these girls run some pretty incredible times. Um, you know, low fives. Um, when you look at the conference record, that belongs to Angela Holman. Um, the impressive distance runner from Spencerville. She ran that um, back in the early 2000s. That stood for some time, but, you know, low fives, mid fives, those are some impressive times. And after you get in through this first lap, you know, these middle two, kind of when we start seeing these runners try to settle in, they kind of start pack running, getting on each other's shoulders, and then that last lap is just an all-out sprint. <laughs> So as they got past that first lap, your leader, Lily Montgomery of Columbus Grove, right next to her, Brinley Moody of Lincoln View. I would imagine, as we said, Moody came in with the fastest time, I believe. So I am sure she has a strategy going in her mind. Now, when you look at Brinley Moody right now, it looks like she's going to try to settle in right on the shoulder there of Montgomery, kind of stay with her, let them pull her around the track a little bit. And I, I suspect here in the next maybe lap, lap and a half, we'll see her make her move, if not sooner, to kind of try to push the pace. Already got a pack right there of uh, five girls who are um, hanging out there together. You know, they kind of have the bird philosophy going on. Got one leader and the other ones are tucked inside. Yeah, there's not a ton of wind right now, but yeah, uh, even the little bit that there is, if you can get it on somebody's shoulder, let them kind of take that around. It also kind of helps you set your pace, let you get comfortable. They have to work a little bit harder. They know you're there. They don't want to fall back. You know, it's kind of trying to see who can get uncomfortable first, and then that's when you like to make your moves. Some results to give you as we are watching this race. The 4 by 2 which just finished a short time ago. Spencerville was your winner in that. 151.39 was the winning time. That gives us our team scores. Columbus Grove still in the lead with 75. Bluffton just two points behind with 73. Lincoln View third place 49.5. And Spencerville fourth with 38. Lily Montgomery and Brinley Moody, still your leaders here at the halfway point. Yeah, it, the, the, that front pack almost looks like Moody's holding back a little bit. It doesn't seem to be moving as fluid. They are very tightly bunched in there. You almost, as a coach, you start to get a little worried about feet getting tangled up, especially if you want to go try to break out of that pack. So we'll see if they separate themselves at all or if they keep themselves tightly packed in as we come around on this third lap. Well, Moody's already run more than others have because she's been in the outside lane the whole time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's, um, you know, you saw the alleys. It's not really a stagger. It goes away after that first hundred. And so she's been on that outside a little bit farther distance. She's had to work her stride a little bit different than the girls on that inside. And she's just kind of settling in right now. And 
We'll see, though. I mean, 600 meters left to go here, and I'm still a little bit surprised that she hasn't tried to pull away. So as they get around the curve here, we're going to be at about the 500 mark, um, getting close to that point where they are going to have to pick up the pace yeah, to, uh, and, to get a finish. And it's always interesting to see who goes first, and, <laughs> you know, because there's always that kind of that um, looking. And it looks like it's going to be Moody and Kilwicky as they pulling away from Montgomery. Kilwicky trying to stay with Moody now as we come towards the start finish line to begin this last lap. Moody making her move. Kilwicky trying to go with her. And there they go. The bell is rung. They have 400 yet to run. Five racers make that top five, but you, as you said, those top two. And take a look at uh, Moody take off now. Yeah, and that's what kind of what it, you know, what I thought was happening. Moody really did look like she was holding herself back, staying with the rest of those girls. And she started to go. Kawiki tried to go with her, but Moody looks like the much fresher runner. And you can see with the pace that she is running, it'll be interesting to see what this time is and what this strategy did as far as, you know, we know her seat time was 5.17 coming in to see if this gets her close, if it maybe even helped her drop some time. But the pace seemed a little bit slow th th through those first three laps. And Renly Moody right now re really leaving no doubt on this final lap. Yeah, almost like she was just setting back or sitting back, uh, letting things go, doing the pace with, with a plan at the end, with plenty of endurance to get her through to the end. Yeah, as she comes around, she's looking very strong in this last 100. Macy Kowicki's ran a nice race as well. And she's really pulled away from the three girls that were in the pack with them on this last lap, and she's going to take home second. Brindley Moody, the freshman from Lincoln View, making her way to her first NWC championship in the 1600. The senior from Crestview, Macy Colwicky, will finish second. Watch third place here because we've got a challenger, the two Grove runners who know each other quite well. As Camp House just ran out of track, couldn't track down Montgomery. But Columbus Grove with some big points as they're going to bring home third and fourth. You know, when we talked about the scoring, the depth really can help you. It's not always about finishing up front. It's finishing multiple runners in the scoring positions can really help you pull away. Men's 1600 meters, we've got 15 on the track. Number one, Evan Hitz of Columbus Grove. Number two, Evan Johns of Lincoln View. Number three, Eden Antrim of Bluffton. Four, Luke Ellerbrock of Columbus Grove. Five, Lanny Oakman of Spencerville. Six, Connor Baldoff of Lincoln View. Seven, Diego Baldazzo of Lipsick. Eight, Keaton Lehman of Allen East. Nine, Noah Stewart of Spencerville. Ten, Connor Guevara of Lipsick. Eleven, Calvin Durstein of Bluffton. Twelve, Logan Foudy of Crestview. 13, Jacob Henson of Ada. 14, Peyton Scott of Crestview. And 15, Landon Simon of Ada. Top seat time coming into the race belongs to Eden Antrim of Bluffton, a 423.11 seat time. That puts us on record watch as the conference record belongs to Bailey Toe, a 423.07. Eden Antrim and the Bluffton crew, those uh, boys really been working hard the last few weeks to uh, prepare themselves, already thinking of state. You know, they definitely have their goals set and they know what they want to do this season. Yeah, if he can continue to run like this, definitely a, a trip to Columbus is on his horizon and even being able to challenge for that state championship as they pack together there for the first 200, but Antrim trying to push that pace, getting out in front and leading the pack. There really is quite a pack here. We talked about the girls. There was a pack of about five, but here, this is a big group here of the guys as they come around here at the first 400. Yeah, and he looks a little settled on, you know, not very strained. Doesn't look like he's, you know, under a lot of stress right here. So nice open strides, looking strong. And, um, you know, we were talking off air. It had been nice, you know, <laughs> wish, wish everybody had the uh, clocks for us. We could see what these times were to see what kind of lap splits that we're getting out of him. But Antrim right now leading up front. He does have a runner that could help push that pace. Luke Ellerbrock of Columbus Grove came in with a 429, uh, 429 flat seed time. So he's up front trying to stay on his heels, and we'll see if maybe that doesn't help Antrim get around a little bit quicker. That's right. You see Ellerbrock right there behind Antrim, almost looking like he almost wanted to pass him, but he's not. He's tucked right behind in there. And then Lanny Oakman, another great distance runner from Spencerville, is currently your third place runner. Pack is starting to break up just a little bit now here as we make our way around the turn. Now you get your top seven there all in a straight line. 
Coming around here on this second lap. Moving through relatively smooth. Everybody looks still pretty strong as Antrim continues to lead, but he's got two runners right there on his heels who, you know, look to to want to almost overtake him, as you had kind of mentioned, especially on that inside. And that's exactly what Ellerbrock is going to do as he moves in front of Antrim. A little bit of smart running there by Ellerbrock. He made his way, was able to pass on the inside, did not have to do anything extra, and actually pushed Antrim out just a tad bit. As you know, we know it may not feel like a lot, but every little extra... Um, inch that those runners have to run is a little bit more than what their race actually calls for. And you see Lanny Oakman right there with him as well, and there he goes. Oakman makes a move, a little burst of energy gets him in front, and he opens up a big lead. Oakman came in today with a 438 seed time, and he, pull, he pulls right by and opens up a nice lead on both uh, Antrim and Ellerbrock. Take a look at that. Oakman, a senior from Spencerville. Antrim also a senior from Bluffton. Ellerbrock, a junior from Columbus Grove. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if Oakman can continue this as he gets his way around to uh, almost one final lap here to go. And then here comes Antrim, almost exactly like what we saw in the last race. Take a look at that stride. Oh, and he's just burst it out with a big stride. Uh, Andrew almost looked like he was holding back a little bit, and then he, the, uh, about 450 left to go, decided to make his move, <laughs> and he is just leaving both Oakman and Ellerbrock in a pretty good distance behind him. He's pretty much, you know, he's got a sprint stride there going now. You can see his heels kicking up toward his backside, using that uh, straightaway to increase his, his uh, distance. Oakman still in second, but watch Ellerbrock there. He may be challenging that in a second. Yeah, Ellerbrock has to kick it in. He's working harder than Oakman is right now. It's going to come down to how much Oakman has left in the tank. He's trying to hold off a charging Ellerbrock. Ellerbrock having to expend more energy because he has to pass on that outside, um, plus trying to catch up. Ellerbrock moves around to Oakman here in the last 100, 100 meters. And here comes Eden Antrim of Bluffton. The senior is going to wrap up his high school conference career with a championship in the 1600 meters. Ella Brock second, Lanny Oakman third. Taking a look at this race for fourth place right now. And it's Connor Baldoff who just got past Evan Pitts, Columbus Grove. We're moving now to the women's 4 by 100 meter relay back to the sprints. You're watching the NWC Track Championship sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima. Walpock and Delphus call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. In the girls 4 by 100 meter relay, this is heat 2 of 2. In lane 2, it's Crestview. Lane 3, Bluffton. Lane 4, Spencerville. Lane 5, Columbus Grove. Lane 6, Delphus Jefferson. And lane 7, Lipsick. It should be a great race. Top seat time coming in belongs to Spencerville with a 52.30. But right behind them is Columbus Grove and Delphus Jefferson. Grove comes in at 52.38. Delphus Jefferson, 52.80. We know that Delphus Jefferson has Liv Lindemann as I believe it is their anchor leg. We've already saw her in the 100 hurdles and in the 100 meter sprints. So it should be an exciting race here. We talked about the handoffs in that four by two and the four by one, it's even that much more important as there's only one time around the track. And it looks like Liv actually is gonna be leading off for Jefferson, trying to get them a, a big lead, which looks exactly like she what she's done. So they've got Lindemann leading off from Delphus Jefferson, but then your 100 uh, dash winner from Crestview Dollar, she's gonna be anchoring for them. Had a great exchange for Delphus Jefferson on that first one. A little bit of a rough one down there in, it looked like that was in the top lane, Lipsick, but they made, did a nice job making up for it. But it looks like Jefferson might still be out in front by just a little bit. Come on, clear! Clean, uh, clean handoffs there. Looks like everybody, we're gonna have a good race. Spencerville, Grove, Jefferson. Crestview trying to come into the conversation oh, as well. Look at Spencerville. Spencerville Whoa. looks like they might have just got the lean. Crestview comes up on the inside and may have taken second there. That was an incredibly close race. We're going to have to wait for the final results on that one. 
Boys 4x100 meter relay. Here are your racers in heat two of two. Lane two, Crestview. Lane three, Lipset. Lane four, Delphus Jefferson. Lane five, Allen East. Lane six, Columbus Grove. Lane seven, Ada. And for those who are wondering, it was Spencerville who won the girls 4x1. Crestview got that second place spot, 0 0.03 over Columbus Grove, which finished in third. Should be in for another great race here as Allen East and Columbus Grove and Delphus Jefferson all within a second or less of each other. So once again, could come down to the handoffs. time there in the blocks there getting waiting for everybody to get ready and it was a clean start without a false start but Ada or excuse me Lipsick stumbled coming out of blocks and we see that that cost them as they go into that last exchange but look up front Allen East moving up top that's right they let off with Hirschberger Friesner Schaefer and Hensley is their foursome for this race and they are blazing around this track they've had two incredible handoffs that's really led to this opening We'll see how this last one goes. Another great clean exchange. Bluffton right there with them, though. No, excuse me, that's Delphus Jefferson. Jefferson pulling right up, neck and neck. Allen East and Jefferson coming into the line, and oh. Allen East just takes it. They got it. Allen East is your winner in the men's 4x100 meter relay. That wraps it up for our sprint relays here. When we return, it's time for one lap around the track. It'll be the girls, 400 meters. You're watching the NWC Track Championships on WOSN. You're watching the NWC Track Championships on WOSN, sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. And here it's time for the girls 400 meters. This is heat two of two in lane one, Virginia Boy of Spencerville. Lane two, Allison Diller of Bluffton. Lane three, Chloe Nielsen of Crestview. Lane four, Lauren Ockmoody of Columbus Grove. Lane five, Jade Raider of Columbus Grove. Lane six, Jordan Smith of Ada. Lane seven, Courtney Sumner of Ada. And lane eight, Grace Ross of Crestview. This has got to be... I, in my opinion, the toughest race <laughs> it, it, throughout the entire track meet. To be an, uh, anybody who enjoys running the 400 or wants to run the 400, there's got to be a, a little something screwy going on. <laughs> this, uh, this was my this was my race in college. Are you telling me I have something screwy going on? I stand by my head? previous statement. <laughs> the, these these runners work very well together. Don't <laughs> worry, all of you. <laughs> these runners are it just the feat to be able to run this 400 and what it takes. It, it's it's as much mental as it is physical. I know you hear that in a lot of sports, but if you've ever ran the 400 and especially at a high level you know exactly what i'm talking about and this is a very difficult race and these girls are out, out to a good start are running a good time here in this first heat at this is the point here where um the grit has pulled pulled in that's what you've got right now at this point as they get here in the final straightaway it's who's got that grit to get through the end because it, this is where everything hurts right yeah, now and you, you're starting to feel the legs go everything's getting a little wobbly you see the end right there you're trying to find that last little bit as you see the Grove Runners looking to push each other. Saw a little bit of a peek over her right shoulder by the Columbus Grove Runner. Lauren Ockmoody's your winner. Jade Raider second. And then Ada, I believe that was Courtney Summer with third. Boys 400 meters now, heat two of two. And before we get into that, I want to make a correction of something I just misspoke on with the women's 400 meters. Ada to get third place, but that was freshman Jordan Smith finishing in third place. Congratulations to her. All right, now time for the guys. In lane one, it's Caleb Denman of Lincoln View. Lane two, Trenton Barraza of Columbus Grove. Lane three, Ison Schaefer of Allen East. Lane four, Trent Tiemann of Delphus Jefferson. Lane five, Andon Blankemeyer of Columbus Grove. Lane six, Justin Good of Bluffton. Lane seven, Cohen Cox of Lincoln View. And lane eight, Alec Davis of Bluffton. Top seat time coming into this race belongs to Trent Team and Adolphus Jefferson. A 51 flat seat time. He's going to be chased down by um, Aiden uh, Blankenmeyer, and Blankenmeyer, excuse me, from Columbus Grove. Has a seat time of 51.60. Everybody off to a pretty good start. You don't see too much difference in the staggered. Everybody kind of spaced out right about the same. Yeah, watch the backstretch here to see who can uh, make their way up as they're 
That's this place to get your legs out there, get the big strides. Use that before you make that yeah, next it's about, curve. Yeah, it's about the one spot in this race where you can kind of try to settle in. And you got about a 70 meter mark back there where you just try to get your legs ready to go for this kick that everybody's putting in right now with about a 150 left. Yeah, take a look at Trent Tiemann's kick right there. You can see him on the curve that he was uh, he was making that stagger. But as we now get here into the stretch, you can see this is when the legs start fighting back a little bit, and you can see him trying to bear down, just want to keep their legs moving and coming away with that victory. And in Blankenmeyer of Columbus Grove takes the win. Girls, 300 meter hurdles, heat two of two. Lane one, Mariah King of Ada. Lane two, Aubrey Burkholder of Bluffton. Lane three, Rylan Jones of Allen East. Lane four, Liv Lindemann of Delphus Jefferson. Lane five, Bryn Fortman of Columbus Grove. Lane six, Kendall Palte of Columbus Grove. Lane seven, Morgan Apple of Lipstick. And lane eight, Lindsay Hatcher of Lincoln View. Top seed time coming into this one belongs to Liv Lindemann from Delphus Jefferson. She comes in with a time of 46.10. Does put us on a little bit of a record watch as the conference record belongs to Carly McClure at 45.83. Nice clean start by all the ladies. You know, Jennifer, we were talking prior to this race, you know, if the 400 is what I consider the hardest race out here, <laughs> this one's 1B one when it comes to it with the skill and stamina and speed that you have to be able to, to run this race. Absolutely. And look at the skill, stamina, and speed of Liv Lindemann as she is just pacing her way around each of those hurdles. Does not make it look like it is too strenuous. <laughs> no, no. No wasted motion, and that's a big key here on this 300 hurdle is making sure that your timing is right. You don't want a lot of wasted motion. You don't want it to slow yourself down for the stutter. You don't want to float over the hurdle. You want to hurdle it, and that's a difficult thing to do when you're running this distance. With Lindemann, just one more hurdle to go after, a, oh. Little bit of a stumble there. We'll see what her time is. It'll be interesting to see if she was close because when she started, she had a great start. So we'll see if that time is going to come close to possibly setting a new record here today. There's no admission fee for you to watch this game on TV, but there is a fee for WOSN to broadcast it for you. Say thanks to viewer support at WOSN by sending a financial gift right now. This station relies on the donations of viewers to enable airing of this track meet and all other locally produced programs. Donate now by visiting WTLW.com and click on the Donate button. Heat two of two in the boys' 300-meter hurdles. Lane one, Jackson Brown of Ada. Lane two, Cody Ricker of Lincoln View. Lane three, Julian Gross of Ada. Lane four, Carson Cruzy of Bluffton. Lane five, Caleb Hopkins of Allen East. Lane six, Leighton Blankmeyer of Columbus Grove. Lane seven, Noah Flores of Lipsick. And lane eight, Noah Peters of Lincoln View. Top seed time coming into this one belongs to Carson Cruz from Bluffton, a 41.34 seed. He looks to get off to a good start. She was the first one over the hurdle. As we are watching these guys race around, we'll let you know that Liv Lindemann finished just a short bit ago with a time of 46.09. We mentioned could be on a record watch. She was close. That record was 45.83. Liv did get a personal best with 46.09. So Carson out in front leading the pack. Kind of as they come down, he comes over that last hurdle. He does hit that hurdle, but because of the way that he attacked it, it didn't look like it uh, cost him any time. He leads coming over the last one. A little bit of a stutter, but he takes home the victory. Allen East was second in that one, and Columbus Grove was third. Welcome back to the NWC Track Championships. We are at Delphus Jefferson. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Nate Garlock, and you are watching this event sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. In Lima, Wapak, and Delphus, call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. As we get ready now to move into the girls' 800-meter run, Columbus Grove is your current leader after event 15 with 121 points. Bluffton is second with 88, and Lincoln View third with 64.5. Here are the runners in this race. In lane one, 
Brinley Moody of Lincoln View, Ella Armstrong of Bluffton, Lydia Damascio of Ada, and Bailey Miller of Crestview. In lane two, Nadia Ricker of Spencerville, Lily Montgomery of Columbus Grove, Grace Ross of Crestview, and Isabel Carmen of Allen East. Lane three, Grace Goki of Spencerville, Kendall Hoffman of Lincoln View, Carly Rockhill of Ada, and Zoe Schroeder of Lipstick. And four, June Essinger of Bluffton, Grace Mormon of Columbus Grove, Dylan Miller of Allen East, and Emily Cuevas of Lipstick. Top time coming into the race belongs to Brindley Moody, the 1600 meter champion. She comes in with a seat time of a 2.26. Be interesting to see what kind of strategy she employs here. We saw her kind of hold back in that mile before turning it on with about 600 meters left to go. As right now, though, it looks like she's going to just try to shoot up front and push the pace. That's right. You know, the 800, middle distance, but anymore, these runners who are running those really good times are not striding out too much during these two times around the track. Yeah, there's really just not a lot of time to try to build in, you know, quote unquote, a rest while you're running um, this race, because anymore, these are just all out sprints, everything you got. And Brindley Moody makes little work of that stagger on the inside. Only one runner to overtake as all the runners now will be able to come down the track and get into lane one if they like. That's right, so we've got Brindley Moody in the second spot at the moment, but you got the Spencerville Bearcat, Nadia Recker, currently leading with just less than a lap to go. So Recker comes in a seat time of 2.30 flat. She's gonna try to hold off Moody. We know that Moody has a kick. We saw it in the mile race. We'll see if she has that same sort of burst here in this 800. Have a good race going for third and fourth place as well. And then a couple of girls within earshot of fifth. And now we watch Moody doing what we saw her do in the 1600. She's increased her stride, starting to increase her pace as well. She's got her arms up tight, which is a little more of a sprinter run rather than the, uh, the distance run as she makes her way in that final 200. And she definitely did have that burst. You saw her use it for about 25, 30 meters there. Opened up a nice lead. She's going to try to ride that all the way into the finish. So we've got Brindley Moody of Lincoln View in first place, but keep an eye on second, third, and fourth. Right now there is distance between them, but I'm always curious to see what's gonna happen in the final straightaway. You have the two Spencerville runners, Grace Goki and Nadia Ricker. Goki coming in, trying to overtake her. She does just that, just as you were talking about, Jennifer, here in that last 100 meters. Goki able to come up. Ricker's gonna finish third. And Bluffton's runner, Ella Armstrong, is going to take home fourth. Boys 800 meters, another large group of runners here. And this is who we have racing for us. In lane one, Landon Armstrong of Bluffton, Mitchell Adams of Spencerville, Noah Stewart of Spencerville, Brenton Rodriguez of Crestview, and Hayden Schimmler of Delphus Jefferson. Next, we have Sam Durstein of Bluffton, Creston Toe of Lincoln View, Bryce Boniface of Columbus Grove, Keaton Lehman of Allen East. The next group, Diego Baldalzo of Lipsick, Isaiah Watts of Crestview, Mason Selover of Ada, and Connor Guerva of Lipsick. And the next group, Connor Baldoff of Lincoln View, Logan Mershman of Columbus Grove, Chase Caldwell of Ada, and Blaine Martin of Delphus Jefferson. Top seed co coming in comes or belongs to the defending champion in this event, Landon Armstrong. He was conference champion last year, setting a new meet record of 156.16. Seat time a little bit off of that today, 157.90. He'll be pushed by his teammate, Sam Durstein, uh, Durstein of Bluffton of 158.30. Want to mention the uh, girls uh, finishing. Brindley Moody, we just saw that freshman from Lincoln View, 223.23. Nice time drop for her. She came in with a 226 seat time. Landon Armstrong down at the bottom, as was Brindley Moody. So he's going to come around. We'll see how quickly he moves up and eliminates that stagger here on the first lap. We are watching two Bluffton runners who come in with your top seed times. Bluffton currently in second place after the last boys race. They've got 81 points to Columbus Grove's 118 points currently in first place. They can go 1-2 here, though. That's 18 points. Can jump them up, get them within striking distance as it 
as you look through here, Columbus Grove has some runners that might be on the fringe of scoring. So this race could become really important when you start looking at that point total. Already we see those two Bluffton runners up there, but they're not the only ones who are aiming there for a lead. Lipstick's top runner, he's up there trying to split between the two of them. Spencerville, Lincoln View both have runners up front as well. So very good race going on here as we head into the final lap. Diego Bazalzo comes in with a 203.87, jumping up there with the guys who are below two. He he knows that he wants to he wants to be paced by these guys. Yeah, the sophomore Creston Toe also right there, not too far back. And Creston Toe comes from a long lineage of distance runners. And Bailey Toe mm -hmm. had the record here um, for quite some time. Actually still has the record, I believe, in the 1,600-meter uh, yes, run. Yes, I believe you are correct. So distance running, mid-distance running, no stranger to, uh, to him and his family. He's trying to overcome and move into third place as the Bluffton top two runners up front. Trying to push one another. That's right. It's Landon Armstrong and Sam Durstein battling it out here toward the end. Look at that kick going. That's Armstrong. He's first. Bluffton goes 1-2. And it's Toe with third place. Heat three of three. In lane one, it's Madison Burris of Delphus Jefferson. Lane two, Addison Dowler of Crestview. Lane three, Claire Hoback of Spencerville. Lane four, Lauren Ockmoody of Columbus Grove. Lane five, Maya McDougall of Bluffton. Lane six, Nakaya Kimmett of Delphus Jefferson. Lane seven, Allison Thompson of Columbus Grove. And lane eight, Rylan Jones of Allen East. Top seed time coming in belongs to Lauren Ockmoody of Columbus Grove. The sophomore ran a 27.09. She already brought home the championship in the 400 meter earlier today. Trying to see if she can't do the same here in the 200. So the uh, starter looked like he may have had a problem with his gun is that what appears yeah, be either either a misfire or didn't realize that he, he was empty so when he went to pull the trigger just a click not a bang so was, they were held a little bit longer in the block so you wondered if something was going on but it looks like they're set now and ready to to get going Going. After uh, after a restart, and sometimes that can uh, can cause a little bit of hesitation in the blocks. It's sometimes you know you're anticipating the gun, but then you wait too long. But it looked like a good start by everybody, and right in the middle of the track, we have a great race here in this last hundred meters. Lauren Ockmoody is in lane four. Akmudi trying to hold on, trying to finish strong. Oh, that was a close one. I think Akmudi kept it, but Crestview and Allen East both very close there at the end. And Rylan Jones made up some distance there. She may have been able to squeak out a second. And I tell you what, what a day that the Crestview runner has had. Addison Dowler has ran fantastic and almost pulled that one off as well. Heat three of three. Lane one, Logan Jolliffe of Ada. Lane two, Kellen Putman of Crestview. Lane three, Trent Tiemann of Delphus Jefferson. Lane four, Hayden Heigel of Lipsick. Lane five, Trey Hensley of Allen East. Lane six, Cole Hurston of Delphus Jefferson. Lane seven, Jackson Freisner of Allen East. And lane eight, Carson Cruzy of Bluffton. Coming in, Hayden Heigel, look, or Heigel looks like the big favorite. He has a seed time of 22.39. Next closest seed time belongs to Trey Hensley and Cole Hurston. Both runs a 23 flat. So we'll see if either one of them are able to get up to Hayden and challenge him for the win. Nice start by all the runners. See on the inside. Coming out around into the lead is Hayden Heigl. Heigl doing a nice job being on the inside of that lane. 
Heigl still in the lead, trying to hold him off as Heigl's going to come away with the championship. Looks like followed by Bluffton, and then it was either Crestview or Allen East there in third. I think that actually was Hurston Jefferson, and then Trey Hensley from Allen East moved his way up to third place. For the girls' 3200 meter run. You're watching the NWC Trek Championship sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Home Style happens here. Here's who we have racing in this race. Number one, Lavina Grillo of Spencerville. Two, Olivia Snyder of Lincoln View. Three, Brindley Moody of Lincoln View. Four, Sarah Camphouse of Columbus Grove. Five, Lily Montgomery of Columbus Grove. Six, Anna Gardner of Crestview. Seven, Lydia Tarpley of Bluffton. Eight, Elizabeth Hanse of Bluffton. Nine, Hope Hamilton of Spencerville. Ten, Kaya Heinbau of Allen East. Eleven, Elsie Allen of Ada. And twelve, Miriam Mathis Schwartz of Allen East. Eight laps around the track here in the girls' 3,200 meter run the longest run for, longest race rather, in this meet. Top seed coming into this is Brindley Moody with a time of 12, uh, 12.09, I believe, is what her seed time is. We've already seen her win a couple races as well. As these ladies are off and running, bring you some results. That happened on Thursday. This is when this meet actually began. In the shot put, Tad Koch for the boys is first place with Columbus Grove with a winning throw of 52 feet. In the girls' discus, Nicole Nesby of Columbus Grove, 106.10. In the girls' long jump, Lauren Ockmoody of Columbus Grove is your first place finisher. 16, 2 and 3 quarters. In the boys' high jump, Kyle Basil of Bluffton, clearing 6 feet. In the boys' discus, Lawson Mag of Columbus Grove, throwing 173, 6. And in the boys' pole vault, Trevin Baxter of Columbus Grove, clearing 13 feet. In the boys' long jump, your top winner, Jared Harding of Crestview, 19, 8 and a half. And in the girls' shot put, Nicole Nesby, Columbus Grove, 37, she is a freshman. Seated shot put, Megan Hurston of Delphus Jefferson, 11-3. And in the girls' high jump, Sadie Tarpley of Bluffton, 4 feet 10 inches is what she cleared. In the girls' pole vault, your winner from Bluffton is Brianna Tabor, Tabor clearing 10 feet 6 inches. And we also had in the girls' 4 by 800 meter relay, which happened on Thursday, Bluffton was your winner at a time of 10 16 85. And in the boys' setting a brand new meet record was the relay team from Bluffton time of 801.83 their previous record the previous record time was 805.11 all right here we go the girls are making their way around and we've got three ladies who are your leaders at this point currently in the lead is your Columbus Grove runner, that's Sarah Campus from Columbus Grove, second place, Brinley Moody from Lincoln View, and third right now is Anna Gardner from Crestview. All three of these ladies are freshmen. Of course, you've already seen Brinley Moody, twice now conference champion as a freshman here, 1600 and 800, and we know her style, especially we saw it in the 1600. She will tuck behind the runner, and she will just keep going until she does what she is going to do. So we're going to check and you know keep watching and see if that's what's going to happen here. These ladies make their way around the track. Almost first few laps are done. And you've got three women, three freshmen, who are your top contenders. Currently in the meet right now, Columbus Grove is your leader overall for the girls. Uh, at this point in the meet, they are winning. And right now, Columbus Grove... Runner is also winning in this race. Well, hey, we're going to take a quick break. So 
Don't go too far because we're going to be back very quickly. But once we come back, we will bring you the rest of this girl's 3,200 meter run. You are watching the NWC Track Championships right here on WOSN. Welcome back to the 3,200 meter run. Our leader is now Brinley Moody. When we left before, she was in second place, but she has since moved her way into the lead and is increasing that lead with every single step. Just two laps left to go for Brinley. Lincoln View freshman who has already proven herself to be a stellar distance runner as she makes her way around. Still in that second and third place spot, you've got Sarah Camphouse of Columbus Grove in second. Anna Gardner from Crestview is currently in third. But Brindley Moody has taken over your lead at the moment and is continuing to increase that lead as she looks to get her third conference championship just as a freshman runner. This is the 3,200 meter race. There you go. You see your second and third place runners right there. It's Camp House from Grove is in second. Gardner from third in Crestview. Basically stride for stride right now. These two are still battling it out together. Moody continues as she makes her way around the curve, increasing her stride as she gets ready to eye her final lap in this race. 3,200 meter run. You're watching the NWC Track Championships sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens right here. And right here on the track, it's Lincoln View's Brindley Moody making her way down the straightaway and getting ready to run her final lap in the 3200 run. You know, TV44 and WOSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers just like you. Now is a great time for you to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click Donate. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTLW.com forward slash donate. All right, Brinley Moody making her way around her final lap. But look what's happening here between second and third place. That's Anna Gardner choosing to run on the outside. Well, tucking herself back in here. Still in third place behind Camp House. Notice Camp House just had to sneak out around, kind of use a little bit extra energy to get around that other runner. And now Gardner is taking advantage of the straightaway here. Strides are much bigger than they were earlier in this race and she is now moving strongly into second place. Camp House still trying though. She is still trying to catch up. No one is catching up with Brinley Moody right now though. Brinley's on her final 200 in the 3200 race. She is not showing any signs of slowing down as those yellow track spikes or uh, cross-country shoes, whichever one she's got on there, are getting the job done as she makes her way now here, getting to the final straightaway of this race. First place, Brinley Moody is your current leader. Second place is Anna Gardner from Crestview. And third place is Sarah Camphouse of Columbus Grove. There she goes, bringing it in. The freshman from Lincoln View wins three conference championships in those distant races. Second place, Anna Gardner of Crestview. Third place, Sarah Camphouse of Columbus Grove. All three are freshmen. Gives you a good look at what's going to be the future of distance running in this area. It's the other long race. It's the men's 3,200 meter run. Here are the contestants. John Evans of Lincoln View has number one. Maddox Norton of Lincoln View, two. Luke Ellerbrock of Columbus Grove, three. Eric Nygaard of Bluffton, four. Trent Koch of Columbus Grove, five. Lanny Oakman of Spencerville, six. Ethan D'Souza of Ada, seven. Landon Selhorst of Bluffton, eight. Henry Lee of Spencerville, nine. Jacob Heth of Crestview, 10. Connor Mikens of Lipsick, 11. Landon Erickson of, Erickson of Lipsick, 12. And Aiden Beckwith of Ada, 13. Top seed time coming into this race belongs to Luke Ellerbrock of Columbus Grove. The junior comes in with a 924.70 second uh, seed time. We are on record watch as the conference record is 936.38. That belongs to Micah Grandstaff. Here's a look at how the girls 3200 meters finish. Brinley Moody of Lincoln View got her third NWC Conference Championship. 
finishing the 3200 with a time of 1238.71. Anna Gardner of Crestview, second place 124507. And Sarah Camphouse of Columbus Grove, third in 1247.86. So it looks like Eller Brock has gone right out to the front. He wants the lead. Going to try to go wire to wire. Lanny Oakman right there in second place. Oakman had a good 1,600 meter run. Kind of um, came out a little out of nowhere. Weren't really expecting to see him challenging for that lead. It's, he led late in that race before um, finally falling back. And I believe he finished third in the 1,600 meters. Yeah, right behind both those Bluffton runners. Speaking of Bluffton runners, Eric Nygaard really specializes in this race. We don't hear his name a whole lot in any other part of the meet. And he has shifted his way up into second place there. And it looks like he wants to try to settle in right up with Ellerbrock and try to go with him. This should be a really fun race, especially with the times that they're looking to run. You know, it's a good conditions for Nygaard to try to drop some time. His seat time at 9.45, 2.4 coming in. So has an opportunity to try to PR today and see how long he can try to hang with Hellebrock and maybe challenge him for the win. So we got a group right up there. We've got two Columbus Grove runners, Trent Koch and Luke Ellebrock. We've got Bluffton's Eric Nygaard and Spencerville's Lanny Oakman. That's your crew leading the way here in the 3200. Yeah, a bit of a second group kind of gathering up back. Looks like the teammates from a Lincoln View sitting back there in fifth and sixth. And then maybe Crestview, Spencerville, and Bluffton again back there right behind them. So not too spaced out right now as everybody's within at least you know, a striking distance, but we'll see what this lead pack does here as they finish up their second lap. Not surprised that the Lincoln View runners are right there next to each other since they do a lot of training together. That's Trent Koch, who is your leader right now from Columbus Grove, being challenged by Nygaard. And then we've got Ellerbrock and Oatman right there in the back. But just as soon as I said that, it looks like Ellerbrock may be starting to make a move there. Yeah, Trent Koch, a little bit of a surprise. We saw the Columbus Grove guy uh, runner out front. Just I just assumed it was been Ellerbrock with the times that he was expected to run today. But his teammate off to a great start. Ellerbrock comes up there, settles in behind him. You got Nygaard still right there on him, as is Oakman. We're going to hang with this race for just a little bit before we go to break because it's interesting to see what these four guys are doing. Of course, they know each other very well. They've been racing each other for many years, so they really kind of probably know what's going on right now. Yeah, they seem to have settled in a little bit. Nygaard seems like he almost wants to go by Ellerbrock, but then he settles back in as they've kind of now just gotten into a straight line. Hook up top, Ellerbrock behind him, Nygaard. You know, he's kind of flirting with whether or not he wants to go around Ellerbrock or if he's just going to settle in there on his right shoulder and run with him. And Oakman right there, too. We, we saw that he has a burst. We know that if he wants to make a move, he's capable of doing that as well. So they've guys just about have five laps to go here, so they're not quite at the halfway point. Your leader is still Trent Koch from Columbus Grove. Second is currently Ellerbrock from Columbus Grove as well. Third is Nygaard from Bluffton. And fourth is Oakman from Spencerville. Don't go very far. We will be right back to finish up this race. You're watching the Northwest Conference Track and Field Championship meet at Delphus Jefferson right here on WOSN. Welcome back to the men's 3200 race. We are down to just a little over two laps to go, and Ellerbrock has taken over the lead, but Eric Nygaard of Bluffton right behind him, not willing to let him go at all. Yeah, we saw Ellerbrock make his move towards the front as they were coming in at the end of uh, would have been lap six. Moves through, and he opened that up, but Nygaard went right with him as Right now, those two are leading the way, opening up that lead here in this final lap. Stride for stride right here, but what you've got going on is Eric Nygaard, longer legs, so he's automatically going to be able to have a bigger stride if he wants. But, of course, Luke Ellerbrock, a strong runner with a lot of history, too. And it'll be interesting. It looks like Nygaard trying to make a move right here, but Ellerbrock up for the challenge, gets around the lap traffic. Nygaard right with him, though. We'll see when Nygaard wants to try to make a move. He's going to try to see if Ellerbrock goes first or if Nygaard wants to go first and have 
Ellerbrock answer. Now you see Nygaard just tucked himself back around behind because he probably knows that the curve is not the best time to uh, make that move. He's got to have it toward the end if he's going to be able to overtake Ellerbrock. Luke Ellerbrock of Columbus Grove is your current leader. Nygaard, Eric Nygaard of Bluffton is right behind him. And they're definitely picking up the pace and Nygaard staying right with him. Ellerbrock trying to extend that lead just a little bit, but Nygaard right with him. One lap left to go, and those two are going to have a fun last lap. That's right. I could see the grit on the face. I talked about the grit earlier in the 400. Now we're to that grit point in the 3200, because these guys got a sprint right at this point. They've been running and running, and now they got a sprint. And you see Ellerbrock open up the lead a little bit there as the pace that they're running. They're definitely going to have a negative split here on this last lap, which is something that you obviously you would like to have. Ellerbrock really pushing himself there off the of his uh, pace. I think that the uh, meet record is probably going to be safe as they got off to a little bit of a slow uh, first mile, but Ellerbrock really pulled uh, putting it on now is Nygaard has fallen back. That's right. He has got the speed as he finishes that final curve. Luke Ellerbrock of Columbus Grove, the junior, going to make his way toward the straightaway with the biggest lead he's had of the entire race. And he still looks strong as he's getting up on those toes, wanting to finish strong. Nygaard not quitting, though, either. Looking to finish, give himself a second, big second place points here. But Ellerbrock comes away with the victory. Probably around 9.45-ish time, so he added some time to what his seed time was, but still good enough to come away with the victory. Third place coming in, that's going to be Columbus Grove again. Trent Tiemann, he is going to be your third place finisher in this race. And almost coming into your camera view, it'll be Lanny Oakman of Spencerville who will finish fourth. And we're back for the last two races of the meet. This is the women's 4x400 four meter relay. You're watching the NWC Track Championships brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. You can find them in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. 4x400 four meter relay, four runners. Each one will run one time around the track. In lane two, Lincoln View. Lane three, Crestview. Lane four, Columbus Grove. Lane five, Spencerville. Lane six, Bluffton. Lane seven, Ada. And lane eight, Allen East. Top seed time belongs to Columbus Grove as they are going to try to close out the meet with a victory. They come in with a 414.31 second seed. They're going to be tracked down by Spencerville and Crestview on either side of them. 425, 430 seed time. So it should be an exciting race, but this one looks like it's Columbus Groves to lose. We'll see if anybody, we've seen some um, pretty good drops in times in several different races today. So pretty good conditions, not too hot, not too cold. Uh, the weather has kind of turned in uh, into the runner's favor. Don't see a lot of wind out here, so I have an opportunity here for some good times. And we really thought that it was going to rain earlier. Oh, we had yes. a dark cloud that came over, the temperature dropped, it got windy, and we were prepared. In fact, our crews had all the rain gear on all of our, our, our equipment, but what a what a track meet it's been as far as weather. Yeah, it, you know, some days, or sometimes, you know, you get to this part of May and these meets can get really hot. It actually can become almost difficult to run just because of the heat. Um, but the exact opposite here today. Leadoff runners are off and going for Lincoln View. That's Rindell. Crestview's leading off with Colt Wiki. Columbus Grove, Raider, Spencerville, Ricker, Bluffton's Burke Holder. Ada has Smith leading off. And Allen East, Miller is your leadoff runner. See Bluffton out to a great start. But here comes Spencerville. Columbus Grove coming in there as well. So off to uh, 
the kind of race that we thought it was going to be. Spencerville, though, running a nice race here through the first 200 meters. Fun thing about the 4x400 four is it really can change based off of your running group. Got to get four strong runners who can run that 400. And as you said earlier, Nate, it's a tough race to run. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you think it's hard to, or you, you know, you got to be a little bit off to run one 400, then you're going to, I think it rubs off on everybody and you got to convince three of your friends to come out there and do it with you. <laughs> but you can get four 400 runners who can run it strong. You got a heck of a team. And see Columbus Grove digging in deep. Keep in mind, we still are in the stagger here. So Columbus Grove is in your lead. Spencerville is second and Bluffton is third. We've got Coyle for Lincoln View, Miller for Crestview, Fortman for Grove. Spencerville has Greer, Bluffton has Scolas, Ada has King and Allen East has Hoover. Spencerville had a little bit of a tough time there on the handoff, cost them a little bit uh, as they fell back a little bit farther into third as they get this first 100 meters of the second leg out of the way. They're able to get rid of that stagger. Everybody can drop down on the track, but way out in front is Columbus Grove. And Columbus Grove comes into this race as your leader in the entire meet. Yeah, but they could put this one, it'll be able to put a bow on the team championship for Columbus Grove. But they still have to finish, as you see. And it looks like that that's Bluffton turning it on and really closing the gap. Bluffton trying to reel in Columbus Grove to get within striking distance. Yeah, a really great nice second kick. leg. Really nice kick there by Bluffton as Grove hands off to Thompson. Bluffton is handing off to Ikus. Off and going in a dead sprint. So Bluffton gets a great second leg to give themselves an opportunity here. And they've just got to keep Columbus Grove within reach. Columbus Grove comes in with a seed time of 4.14.31. Bluffton with a seed time of 4.29.75. However, we've seen quite a few time drops throughout the day today. So we, you know, you never know what could happen. Mm -hmm. We'll see what able to happen over the last 200 meters. But Columbus Grove has been able to hold off Bluffton here so far. Maybe increase that lead ever so slightly. But here comes the kick from Bluffton. Bluffton, uh, Bluffton will be anchoring with Allison Diller. Columbus Grove will be anchoring with Palti. Here comes Bluffton. They've almost made up all of that distance. As she moves around. This is going to be a great last lap. They're going to be within just a couple steps of each other. Both handoffs are good. And there they go. Grove in the lead. Bluffton on the chase. Spencerville currently in third. Allen East in fourth. Palti did a great job right at the beginning to get off to a quick start to push that lead back out. Diller trying to stay close, but Palti looking very strong right now. Palti looks like she's extended that lead. Diller falling back just slightly. Doesn't want that distance to grow too much if she wants a chance here in the last 200. That's right. Palti just a little bit taller, which I talked about earlier. You got an advantage with longer legs. Automatically going to have a longer stride. Allison Diller, though, with uh, just a lot of punch. That's the kind of runner she is. So she doesn't give up e either. Looks, though, like Columbus Grove maybe making their way to a victory. Palti looks like she's going to do it, able to hold off a hard-charging Diller. And Diller now is going to hold the, looks like she might have to hold off a challenge from Spencerville as Kendall Palti finishes the 4x4 four four for Columbus Grove. They're going to be your 4x4 four four champs. Also going to end up being your team champs when it's all said and done as well. So a great day on the track for Columbus Grove. So that's Grove in first, Bluffton second, Spencerville third, and I need to correct myself. Uh, that's Crestview in fourth. I accidentally said Allen East earlier. The both were in blue. Yeah. <laughs> and that wraps it up for the girls 4x400. Four And now time for the final event of the meet, the men's 4x400-meter relay hit heat two of two in lane two. It's Crestview, lane three, Allen East, lane four, Bluffton, lane five, Columbus Grove, lane six, Lincoln View, and lane seven, Ada. Top seed coming into this race belongs to Bluffton, 331.77, Columbus Grove. We'll be trying to track them down, as will be Lincoln View. 
Those two have seat times of 335 and a 336. So it should be an exciting race once again. Bluffton with a relay team with several names that we've heard quite a few times already in this meet. Antrim, Durstein, Shetler, and Armstrong. That's your foursome that comes in with the top seed time. But you know, we should not ever forget about Columbus Grove too. Between Bluffton and Columbus Grove, they've always got that, that uh that big uh, competition going on. Yeah, and when you look at some of these teams too, the the importance that they put on the 4x4, four four, no matter what else is going on in the meet, and Columbus Grove and Bluffton are two teams that are like that. Columbus Grove with Barraza as your lead off. Blankemeyer, Stecksholdy, and Blankemeyer make out their final four. Overall, we've got Easterling leading off for Crestview in two, Schaefer for Allen East in three, Antrim for Bluffton in four, Barraza for Columbus Grove in five, Cox for Lincoln View in six, and Sullivan for Ada in seven. So we are still in the stagger, but Grove looks to be out to a pretty sizable lead here. As we come around, Bluffton will be on the inside. We'll see where everybody stands as we straighten up here on the front stretch. Now you can see Antrim using that second 200 to move his way in. Always interesting to watch. It's kind of the main philosophy in running the 400 is just, just go. But there's always the people who do that, that backwards um, uh, turn faster in the second half than the first half. And that seemed to work as Antrim's going to be the first one with the handoff. Grove second, Lincoln View third. All the runners are going to be able to move down the track here shortly as they finish this first 100 meters of the second leg. Bluffton's going to be in first, Grove right behind, but those two right now look to be the ones that are going to fight for the lead. Durstein running for Bluffton, Blankemeyer running for Columbus Grove with the slight third place. That is Lincoln View with Toe. Bluffton and Grove still out in front looking strong, opening up a little bit of a lead. You can see Toe, though, trying to reel him in, trying to get a little bit closer. Bluffton kicking it in, opening up a little bit more of a lead over Columbus Grove. As Toe trying to track anybody down right now, pushing it all the way in, going to move up the track to try to get a handoff here. Crestview's going to have to come up high as well. Bluffton in first, Columbus Grove in second, Lincoln View in third, Crestview in fourth, almost bobbled that uh, handoff, but got it going. Toe with a great job to give his team an opportunity here to move up to second, but Columbus Grove's holding on to that. Still trying to look to, for a way to reel in Bluffton. Nate, we finally have the sunshine. This is the first time we've had sunshine during one of these races for the entire meet. Yeah, we, we've kind of run the spectrum as it looked like we were going to have storms and get wet today. It, it got really chilly here about halfway through the meet, and now all of a sudden, sun is out. It's warming up. Going to be a beautiful day. Bluffton is also warming up. They are hot on the track right now as they increase their lead right here. Keep an eye, maybe you can see back behind. Lincoln View just jumped into second place here. So it's Armstrong who's gonna anchor for Bluffton and now Denman's gonna lead handoff to Boldoff in second place. And here's Crestview, they overtook Columbus Grove as well. So Grove went from trying to reel in Bluffton to for the lead all the way back into fourth place. You've got Harding as your anchor for Crestview, Nichols for Allen East, Armstrong for Bluffton, Blankemeyer for Columbus Grove, Baldoff anchors for Lincoln View and Hickman for Ada. But wow, look at Bluffton. Statement here as they get ready for the postseason to start very soon. Bluffton with the huge lead, a nice race for second, third, and fourth back there. Crestview now moves up to second. Columbus Grove right behind. Lincoln View is falling back into fourth. Bluffton's going to come around here. They look like they're going to go ahead and take this one home and be your conference champions. But we have a heck of a race as now Lincoln View moving up to try to challenge Crestview. And here comes Grove as well. All right, you're watching Bluffton right now, but let's move right back to there you go. See what's happening there. Lincoln View in second. Columbus Grove makes it back to third. And Crestview will finish in fourth. We got Allen East now making their way in for fifth. And Ada coming in sixth. And that is going to wrap it up for our meet. Columbus Grove takes it for both the boys and the girls in this conference meet. Yeah, Columbus Grove continues to, to dominate like we've been used to. They're just one of those traditional track powers as they sweep both the boys and girls competition and take home some more conference championships. Certainly saw some great running today, and this is just the start of what we're going to see for the next few weeks, taking us all the way to Columbus. That's yeah, some of my favorite time of the year. and I mean, We get a chance to broadcast a lot of things around here. you got to love basketball season, the, the trip to Columbus, all the things we 
talk about. But I've been a track person for most of my adult life, coached track for a very long time. This stretch of May into the first weekend of June is so exciting. So many good runners. We are spoiled in Northwest Ohio with the talent that we get to see on Absolutely. the track. There's always so many kids that make that trip down to Jesse Owen, and they get an opportunity to compete for uh, state championships, and it's fun to watch. That's right. Just this weekend alone, we've covered three conference tournaments or conference uh, championship meets for you to watch. And then we're going to get started with the postseason, and that'll be taking place. And you're you're going to get to watch that all the way into June. Nowhere else actually in the state of Ohio can you find track coverage like you do right here on WSN. It's one of the reasons why we're the best in the biz. <laughs> all right. Well, that wraps it up for us at this Northwest Conference Track and Field Championship meet. Sunshine is bringing us home here as warm weather is now getting uh, getting us as everyone <laughs> takes off and is done with the meet. Thank you so much for joining us on this track championship sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. For Nate Garla, Kelsey Beamer, Jacob O'Neill, and Nick Fraley. I'm Jennifer Beck. Thanks for watching the NWC Conference Track and Field Championship meet right here on WOSN.